So as you get off uh, in the top corner of Grass Market, you get onto this beautiful, absolutely fairy tale like little street, curved street, hence the name Westbow, which then up the top turns into Victoria Street, isn't it? Uh, so I, I don't know any like history of it or anything, but it is absolutely magical. As you can see behind me there, you've got each part of the building is colored with like a different colored paint and it's got all these little charming cafes and shops and things like that. You can still come here. The cafes in Edinburgh are still open at the moment and lots of lo lots of little boutique shops with handbags and artisan things and uh, it's absolutely amazing. You should really check this out. Look at these shops, look at these places. And another interesting thing about this street is a two level street. So you can climb, you can take one of the closest and climb up the top there. So you can see that terrace above the colored buildings. And on that terrace, you've got another tier of beautiful restaurants and things like that. And the view from there is absolutely astonishing. So if you're here, definitely climb up there and have a little look because it's really amazing. And there's a magical little garden hidden just behind there as well. So maybe we'll visit one day, but let's move on. It wouldn't be Edinburgh if it weren't with Harry Potter. So we've got a Harry Potter shop just right here behind me on the same street. We're still here and it's called the Great Wizard, right? So if you're ever here and you like Harry Potter, you have to check this place out. They literally have everything Harry Potter, everything kind of magic wizardry. And it isn't really tacky. I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, but this is actually really cool stuff. They've got really amazing stuff in there. So yeah, Harry Potter. And the whiskey shop. Guess where I'm going. Oh, oh here's my friend. I'm gonna get take my friend home with me, I think. So we're gonna get drunk for breakfast, yeah? This one is smooth and rich. I don't think we've tried Speyside, have we? And we need a Highland one. What is that, so? Oh, brilliant. You take an extract of that, and then they use that as the base sort of aroma bit. I would just drink that. Mustard for you, huh? Definitely. What, what we do is we buy a, a full-size cask of something a little bit interesting and unusual, and then we further mature the little barrels in the shop and bottle them up. We do have them in bigger and smaller sizes. In this size they range from I think 18 and they go up to, eh, where is it, that one's the most expensive at 30. These two here, but they're quite different from each other. This one we can name, it's called, it's pronounced Lichig. Lichig is the name they give to the peaty whiskey from the Tobermory distillery in, on the island of Mull. It's young and so it's not picked up an awful lot of flavour from the barrel. The light, clean but very smoky. This one's the other way round. We don't know everything about this whisky. We don't know which distillery made it or how old it is. Um, it was matured in a sherry barrel that's given a lot of flavour, rich, full flavours. And it is peaty, but the, the peatiness sort of sits in the background yeah. and comes through as you drink yeah. it. You can have a little sample if it helps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so light in colour, and it is reasonably light in flavour, this one. Um, kind of citrusy, I always get a citrusy note to it. It's not my favourite. Mm. We'll just put on disguises and come back in a minute to get more, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's going to be a quiet day. You can try whichever ones you want. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. See how you go. It's... Thank you. I like that. I really like that. The least known distillery, it's called Dao Yuan that makes this. Now, it's not peaty, uh, but it, like this one, it's sherry cask matured. You get wee fruity notes, and there's a wee bit of gingery spice comes in there. Oh, that smells quite different. Can I smell it? Fabulous. So, Thank so you so much. Enjoy those. In the next month or two, we should have another one. You're welcome to come in and try it. Wow, that guy, huh? Such a brilliant guy. What a fantastic experience. We haven't left the shop empty-handed. And we've got two little whiskies. We got one of the, I still forget how this is pronounced, Lechek, and we this one is Isla, and this is, comes from Isle of Mull. And we've got one which is Speyside. Try these. This, my dears, right outside the St. Giles on the Royal Mile, yeah. is called the Heart of Midlothian. And it, nowadays people treat it as kind of a lucky charm or it's a little heart spit on it for good luck. But actually, as you can see, it wasn't just me being nasty. Um, other people do it too. But uh, 
perhaps the inhabitants of Edinburgh, whatever, will know this story, that this was originally a site for public executions and a prison and things like that. So originally people spat on it in disgust. Nowadays it's turned into a little bit of a tourist thing for good luck. So either way, spit your heart out. As you can see, we are being very open-minded and we are trying the local cuisine. People say that um, due to COVID, whatever, you can't have any fun. Well, we're having massive fun just walking around, discovering this beautiful place. And we're now setting down to have a little breakfast slash brunch, stuck in between the beautiful, bustling, busy Princess Street and the old town and the Royal Mile and the castle and we're down here uh, on top of Waverley on the little terrace setting up for our little breakfast check that out <laughs> whiskey shop baggy it's a long so you can put a big bottle in so this yeah this is a secret space side so that's not the name of the whiskey it's actually a secret space side whiskey they guys said they don't really know where this comes from exactly so. very classy Good boy, come on, check that. Hmm? Good boy, come on. Oh, you're brave. Brave, you. Boy, I'm so close. Are you Roger? Come on, Roger. Burning sheep again. After eating this, and the first thing when it hits your mouth, it's sweet, actually sweet. Oh, it's delicious, smoky, beautiful. It's also sweet when it hits the palate, but it's more like honey. And then after honey, immediately I taste some fruit. It's very pronounced. After honey, I can taste pear, pear, nectarine maybe, something very fruity. So you've got honey and you've got fruit. Very good, fantastic. Mm. Great. I do add water to whiskey well it's a personal preference I think some people maybe don't but I think I generally like alcoholic drinks and I don't mind the taste of alcohol but because whiskey has so many flavors and it's so complex and it is so expensive like if you buy a nice single malt whiskey you really want to be able to taste what you're paying for so all these ingredients all these flavors that come through you know the, the cask flavor and everything that's you know taken years to be put into this stuff it's really worth to be able to taste every single thing so if you bash it with a 40 percent alcohol it really just gives you like oh and then you don't really taste much so if you put a little bit of water like literally a dash like a teaspoon maybe or less it releases a little bit of the flavor because it, it, it dilutes the alcohol etc so it makes it a bit more smoother and it also allows you to taste the flavor without getting completely fucked up this is great, I could drink a lot. It's great to do it. You know, I've memorized the fretboard for the weird parts.